PoePolitikin.com. All right, welcome back to Poe Politikin. I'm now Politikin with Divinity Rocks. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. How you doing? I'm good. So I was listening to one of your songs, and I actually heard you talk about your name and how how it came about, but I want you to talk about it now a little bit, how your name came about. Um, <laughs> the name Divinity was given to me when I first started rapping years ago by this, uh, by this rapper, um, you know, Every good rapper has a, a stage name. So my man, um, he was this cat a long time ago. He was looking for a female rapper, and he was grew up in my neighborhood. And uh, he asked my mom because he heard that I was that I was rapping and you know going around the neighborhood spinning rhymes. So he asked my mom if he could come over and meet me because he wanted to form a group. And um, and he said that. Uh, he said that he uh, always um, thought Divinity was, was a really dope name and would I be interested in taking the name? And I, I was about 13, and I was like, well, let me look it up. <laughs> so after I looked it up, I was like, yo, it's pretty dope. So I kind of I kind of adopted it as myself. All right. And I was reading, you was talking about when you was in college, you was taking journalism and you ended up doing, being a bassist. I just want you to talk about that a little bit and your background and how you got involved in music. Uh, well, I mean, I got involved in music when I was really young. Um, I sang in choruses and played instruments in the school band, you know. Um, I was really excited to join the school band because music was really a big part of growing up for me. My mom always played music in the house, so there was always music playing, always songs going. They would, they, they would always have parties and, you know, football parties on the weekends. There was always music everywhere, so it was like... We lived in this constant uh, musical household, but nobody played music. So when the opportunity came in school, you know, they come around and say, oh, who wants to be in the band and who wants to be in chorus? And I used to just love music class. So I, um, I joined the school band and the chorus. And then I went to college. I went to UC Berkeley to become a journalist. I had a rap group back home in Atlanta for a while, and we was rapping, but I wasn't really playing any instruments. And um, I started hanging out with these musicians, and we were having these parties at my crib in Oakland, where we would have like a live band situation, and MCs get up and rock with the live band. And one of the good friends of mine was uh, was actually playing bass at the time. He was actually a guitar player, but for some reason he was carrying around this upright bass. And um, and I told him after we started having these parties, and I really got inspired by all these musicians that I wanted to play music again because I knew how to read music, but. I had kind of just gotten away from from playing, so um, he was like, "Yo, if you go, if you go and buy a bass guitar and come back to school, I'll start showing you some stuff." So I did. I went home, I bought a bass guitar, shipped the amp out to school, and I fell in love with it immediately. I don't know what it was. I mean, I think at the time too, there were a lot of great bass players. Um, um, Raphael Sadiq had a new album out, Michelle and Dave Cello. Um, the D'Angelo record was really big and it, and it had a lot of faith on it so all of those like it just you know it was just a moment and it inspired me and I fell in love with it and I never put it down I didn't intend to become a bass player I just wanted to play something you know okay and I'm a, I'm a big fan of Beyonce, and I'm a big fan of her band, so I'm actually real happy to have you on the show. You know, you're the you're the bassist and the music director. No, no, no. I'm not currently the bassist and musical director. I have toured during the I Am Tour and the um, B-Day Tour. I'm currently not on tour with Beyonce, um, so I am pursuing my solo career, actually, with the Rock Box experience. But yes, I have had that experience with Beyonce touring all over the world, playing countless numbers of shows with her. And how was that? How did you like it? I mean, I'm still a fan of you because I, I watched some of those, uh, you know, those tours and everything. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No. I just wanted to clarify because I don't want people to say, oh, she's saying that she's currently Beyonce's big player. No, I was Beyonce's big player for the past two tours. Um, man, I mean, how can you describe something so incredible? You know, I mean, she's one of the biggest, if not the biggest artist in the world. 
and to have the experience of touring around the world, not only playing music, but being exposed to so many different cultures and countries and and cuisines and lifestyles. And I mean, it was just incredible from Athens, Greece, to Brazil, to Japan, to Korea, to Taiwan. You know, I mean, we traveled all over the world, all over Europe. So that was like just an incredible experience. You know, I was really fortunate to have that experience. And speaking of experiences, uh, can you talk about the Rock Spot experience? Uh, the Rock Spot experience is a project that actually I was working on. Um, a lot of these songs I was working on before I got the Beyonce gig. Um, I was in the process of putting out my second uh, solo album. My first one was called Ain't No Other Way, and I put that out like in the early 2000s when I was touring with this incredible bass player by the name of Victor Wooten. Um, so I did the tour with Beyonce for, I think I toured with her for about five or six years, and I came off the tour like, man, you know, I, I've i gotten away from myself, you know? So I um, moved out to L.A., got some cats together, and revisited these songs that I had been writing and demoing uh, for a while. So I uh, met some really great musicians. Uh, Carlos McSwain played drums on the record. Uh, Omar Guzmao is an incredible um, guitar player out here in L.A. Eric Rossi, Full Clip Audio, did all the engineering. And I mean, it was just a really good collaboration of people. And uh, we just created this rock box experience. It's bold, it's blatant, it's rah-rah. It's just the epitome of how I was feeling it's funny because it's really in a reflection of how I was feeling before I started touring with Beyonce and and how I felt after I came off a tour because I had really felt like I'd gotten away from the Divinity Rocks experience, from my own musical progress and from my own projects, um, you know, because I had been doing the solo thing for a while before I got the Beyonce gig. And I sort of just did the audition just to see what would happen. You know, I wasn't really intending to uh, to be the bass player for Beyonce, you know, <laughs> it just sort of happened, which is so funny. All right. And speaking of you talking, you was talking about your style and your music. I want to know, can you let us know? I know because I watched it, but just let the listeners know as far as your uh, style and what separates you from a lot of other artists out here right now. Well, man, first of all, I'm, a, I'm an MC who plays who plays an instrument. So I play bass and rhyme at the same time. My show is really high energetic. It's like a rock. It's, a, it's really a rock show, really. Um, the music I do, I call it rocked out hip hop. My motto is I only rock hip hop. So the music is really aggressive and, and fun. And when you come to the show, you can't help but just... Uh, you know, just being taken over by the energy because the energy is massive. It's a massive experience coming to a Divinity Rock show. Okay. And as uh, far as your career, could you talk about how you kind of got sidetracked for a minute? So what would you say your, uh, you know, <laughs> your top three goals for the next two or three years are as far as your career as an artist? Uh, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Because saying that I was sidetracked is a funny way of putting it, but okay. No, no, no cause, but you, the way you said it, you were just saying like you was working on your own thing and then the Beyonce, you know, not in a good, in a bad way. I was just saying, you were saying like. You, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. This is funny. Um, yeah. So, I mean, right now, you know, I'm just really promoting this, promoting the EP and getting more people familiar with the Divinity Rocks experience. You know, um, we've been doing, I've been doing quite a few shows in the last year, man. It was a really hectic year. I was touring all over Europe. Um, I went on two tours in Europe with my solo project. Um, I did this. I got sidetracked once again. I wouldn't say sidetracked, though. I got, I got this gig with uh, this Korean pop band called 21. Um, I did their musical direction and uh, did their tour all over Southeast Asia. We actually did a couple of shows in America uh, toward the end of last year. Um, I released the Rockbox Experience in October of 2012 so we um you know what I'm saying we've just been getting more and more awareness about the projects it's, I mean it's still a, a new release you know uh, we just shot a video for the second single which is going to be called which is called Bitches Brew um I was fortunate enough on this record to get Killer Mike to drop a verse on me for this song called Get a Rock I got Hootsie Collins on the album like I said Carlos McSwain is on the album he's toured with Snoop Dogg so over the next two or three years, I'm actually looking to release another album and to put together another another couple of tours 
we're working on a tour right now for the end of this uh, end of the spring. Probably go back home toward Atlanta in that region. So you know, I mean, I'm super independent. I'm doing everything myself. I'm booking my own tours. I'm booking my own shows. You know, it's just a daily, daily grind. So I mean, it's no joke, man. It's, it's really real out here for real for me. Right. And uh, speaking of you, I want to know what's five things you cannot live without. Five things I cannot live without. Mm. Let's see. Five things I cannot live without. I mean, of course, I can't live without my bass guitar. Um, I cannot live without... <laughs> without my MacBook Pro right about now. <laughs> um, I can't live without my journal. Um, I can't live without my imagination. Mm. Can you talk about that a little bit as far as your, why you say without your imagination? Um, because I really feel like um, imagination is everything uh, when it comes to being creative and when it comes to thinking about uh, your life and how you want your life to be lived. I mean, without your without imagination, you don't even you can't even come up with possibilities. Um, you can't come up with ideas with with creativity at all. You know, what I mean. It's without inspiration, you know. I mean, part of it is being having imagination allows you to to inspire people, which is really what I really want to be able to do with my with my career, with my music, and with my mission, and with my life is to inspire people because it's incredible. Like where I, where I came from, there are so many people who not had the opportunities and the experiences that I've had. And a lot of it probably has to do with not being able to imagine that it's possible to have incredible experiences because sometimes we get caught up in the experience that we're having in the moment. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like that. I was say, so what are, you know, outside of making music, uh, what are some of your interests and hobbies you like to do? I like to go camping. <laughs> I like to camp. I like to do adventurous stuff. Like, uh, a couple of birthdays ago, I went waterfall repelling in Costa Rica. I, I still like to travel just for traveling sake. Um, I also like to cook. <laughs> I like to cook a lot. And I, and I, and I enjoy reading. So... There's just a few things I like to do. I enjoy writing too. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say you sound you sound like a uh, very very busy. So do you have time for like dating and everything or? Man, nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me. Oh, you got me. So no time for dating, but okay. So what kind of guy? What kind of guy do you like though? Um. You know, when I really think about it, I really haven't thought about it in a long time, man. Um, the last time, I, man, I, I mean, I would like somebody who's been well-traveled. You know what I mean? Because that's always not cool to, to try to have a conversation with somebody who don't know nothing about the world, you know, outside of their own neighborhood or outside of their own state. Um, somebody who's intellectual and fun and inspiring and inspired by life and inspired by art and music and culture, you know? But would it have to be, do it have to be like kind of, can it just be a regular dude or does it have to be somebody with means? <laughs> um, I don't think it really matters at this point in my life. I think I'm beyond, beyond that. Okay, that's what's up. And then um, you got to politic a little bit. So is there anything in the political world that's kind of bothering you you want to speak about? You know, it's so funny because I've kind of been out of it for the past, like, a couple of weeks. Um, so I am not even aware. Give me give me something that's, that's really, really popular right now or really going on. I haven't even been looking at my, at my Huffington Post or been turning on CNN. I think I had CNN on the other day, and I was just tuning it all out. Sometimes you got to get away from the politics and bullshit. Um, 
So I, I think I read that Obama's approval rating was really low right now. Oh, yeah, that's kind of one of my questions, too. So what would you, like, you know, like a report card rating, A to F, what would you grade Obama? Oh, man. I think it's safe to give him a, I don't know, man. <laughs> That's a really tough question, you know. I'd have to give him a C. Yeah. He's about an average, you know. We're in a tough time right now. I mean, he inherited a really tough, a tough presidency, and and people are hurting, and it, and it sucks, and and nobody wants to pay a bunch of higher taxes, and nobody wants the government to, to spend too much money, and. But in order for them not to spend too much money, then you got to kind of raise the taxes on the people because you got to replace the money. So, I mean, it's just a really tough, tough, tough situation my man is in right now. And, I mean, corporations don't make it any easier because corporations don't really want to spend the money that it takes, you know, that it takes to help run the country. You know, so it's, it's just, I'm glad I'm not him. That's all I can say. All right. And uh, what's an important life lesson you learned so far that you'd like to share with listeners? <laughs> um, don't allow what you're <laughs> just kind of like what I was talking about earlier don't allow the appearance of your life in in one particular moment to to keep you from from imagining a better life for yourself or you know I also learned that everything is absolutely perfect the way that it is even though it might not seem like it is mm, like and that's hard to accept <laughs> so so with uh with the how you say don't like you can imagine your life better are you saying like telling the people like using vision techniques and stuff or no i'm just saying it's not even just about vision techniques it's about action techniques you know what i'm saying I mean, you have to imagine something and then you have to work towards it to get to where it is that you want to go. You can't just sit around and imagining that my life is going to be better and then all of a sudden it's going to change. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> but you have to use your imagination to improve your, in your mind at least, to know what it is that you, that's possible or know what it is that you want for yourself. You know, it could be anything, you know? Okay, and then speaking of it, anything, I was going to say, can we kind of give that same, how you said, use your imagine, imagination, can we give that towards like an artist if they want to be successful? You know, as you so far, what would you tell them? Ooh, man, it's a grind, boy. <laughs> That's what I was telling them. I ain't going to front. Somebody hit me up the other day and was like, yo, I got my, my cousin want to want to know what it takes to get a record deal and how they going, how can they do this and how can they do that? And I was like, yeah. Your cousin is there anything else in life that you prefer to do? <laughs> For real, huh? You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, I think being an artist is, it's about what you want out of it. You know, what is it that you want out of it? Do you want to be famous? Do you want to, you know, be creative? Do you want to, you know, I don't know. It depends on on, on individuals, you know. You got to work hard. You got to get your brand out there. You got to get your message out there. You got to touch the people in a way where they feel inspired and they and they want to support what it is that you're selling them. But you also have to give them something in return. You can't just... I think it's annoying right now because everybody can make music on their laptops and so everybody's like, here, listen to this, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. But what are you giving people in return? Right. You know? Yeah, you just kind of actually went to my next question. I was going to say, like, you know, as far as now, it's like... People don't really have to buy music if they don't want to. So, and you was talking about giving the people something they want. So, I'll say, why why should the people, you know, buy your music instead of downloading it? You can download it. I actually offered on my website for you to download at divinityrock.com. So, if you want to check it out, check it out, divinityrock.com. Um, you can download the music. You can sign up for the newsletter. Um, keep up to date on what we what we got coming on. Check out when we're coming to your city. You know. So I don't even think it's about selling selling the music right now. I think it's about just, excuse me, getting your message out there in any way you can and sharing it with the people. And, and, and hopefully you'll inspire people enough to actually want to come and see what, that, what that's like live and feel it and mm. touch it, you know? Because, I mean, I guarantee you that my live show is one of the best live shows ever. And I don't need, like, the whole light show and the whole, you know, uh, all, of, all of the you know, all the extras that come with it. Like, you're just really going to leave the show feeling like, yo, you can go home. A lot of people leave the show feeling like they can go home, pick up a bass, and do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, I want to say I thank you for uh, coming through politics with me. Man, I appreciate you for having me come through, y'all. Yeah, no problem. I say, is there anything that we didn't cover that you like to tell the listeners? Mm, y'all, hit me up. Seriously, hit me up on Twitter, at Dibby Rocks. Hit me up on Facebook. Um, check out the website. Sign up to the newsletter. Holla at your girl. And, uh, and hopefully I'll um, see you at a show in a city near you. Popolitikin.com
Betty, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, Black Betty, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, Whoa, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, Whoa, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, she's so rock steady, Bam Lamb, she's always ready, Bam Lamb. I rock rhymes with a show on my hands, I'm a lyrical spirit in my big girl stands. I'm from the city where we don't dance, all we do is this, this, the mic in our hands. MC is for mind control, and I can tell when you bust that you striking the pole. Hold on to your soul, you just might need it when it's time to roll. Whoa, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, whoa, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, Black Betty, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, Black Betty, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, whoa, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, whoa, Black Betty, Bam Lamb, she's so rock steady, Bam Lamb, she's hot and heavy, Bam Lamb. Rock, 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 rock steady, get ready, get the box to get heavy. You can't cash me, you can't check me, go ahead and sound the baby. Go ahead and push that fader Cause we all about to get a little weight out Go ahead and get your bitch now Get up and get, get, and get down Black Betty, Bam Lamb 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 